In this video is a, is a third part of the trilogy. We've done high-end ad campaigns with big production costs, producers, agents, license fees, retouches, digital techs. We've then gone down to local agencies with day rates and when to introduce licensing. And now we're looking at the very beginning. And hopefully the three of these videos, no matter which stage you're at, you should watch all three of them so you can sort of understand where you should be heading. Even if you're just approaching this stage now, Watch the other two so you can sort of get an idea as to where, where everything is, what everything is, how it all comes together. Now, most of us as food photographers, we start off with restaurant photography, your local cafe, your local bar, whatever it may be. I got into this because I used to rent a studio above a bar. I rented it from the bar because they owned the building. And part of my rental agreement was that I shot their food for them three times a month. And I thought that was a brilliant deal. Didn't like food photography at the time, never done it. So I was like, yeah, I'll take some pictures of food. What's the worst that can happen? Turns out a lot. Photographing at this level is one, difficult. Two, the people you work with can be very difficult. And three, it is very badly paid. Now, I don't believe you can make a good living as a restaurant photographer unless you're shooting for the big chains through big ad agencies. Your average cafe, independent cafe, might have between 250 and 500 pounds for their photography. And that's gonna last them a long time. This is not gonna be a weekly thing or a monthly thing. It is highly unlikely that any of these independent chains have enough money or that there's enough of those chains with few enough photographers in the area to get you paid. If you're living in London, there's a lot of independence, but there's also a lot of photographers and a lot of competition. And gosh, a lot of people can take good photos with a phone. And at this level, you're competing with the person who can take a good photo with a phone because it's good enough and you're good enough. So why pay more? Now let's talk about the, you know, the elephant in the room, the pricing. In the UK, I believe that 250 to 500 pounds is the pricing bracket. I don't believe in charging by the hour, and I don't believe in charging by the shot, and here's why. Charging by the shot's a tricky one because how long does the shot take? You know, you could spend ages doing one shot and 30 seconds doing the next. Charging by the hour is difficult for the customer. How do they know if you're not just taking your time? You're constantly feeling under pressure to work faster and faster and faster because you don't want to be perceived as a time waster to try and rack up the bill. And what if the bill gets too big? What if they get to a point where they cannot afford the bill and they've still got half the shots left? You quote per the job. They say, here's what we want, right? If they have 10 dishes they want photographing as flat lays on a table, I'd quote 400 pounds. That's the job. They got edited, retouched and delivered back to you via WeTransfer. In this link, there is one round of corrections and that's it. Additional corrections will cost 20 pound per image, whatever it may be. Or if they go, we, you know, the, the problem with this level of work is you'll get someone coming going, is normally an Instagram message. How much for photos? How much for photos of what? How many photos? What style? You know, you need to really hone this in because what we're dealing with here is photographers at a level where they don't fully understand the craft yet and clients who don't understand photography. So it's a melting pot for disaster. And you need to be really concise and really clear and really manage this project. So first thing you need to do is go, I need a shot list. I need a list of every single photograph that you need. This us go one of two ways. One is they'll come back with 10, 12 shots. You'd be like, that seems reasonable. And I had an agency years ago try and contact me to photograph for a local place. And they wanted me to take 75 food shots in a day. I worked it out at some ridiculous shot per minute ratio. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's doable. And I was like, yeah, not, not for me. It's not, I'm not doing that. That sounds hellish. So you need to work out what they want. Is it realistic? I would say 10 to 12 shots in, in a shoot for a restaurant is realistic. You need to explain to them they need to prepare the, sh the food one at a time. I've done it in the past where they've cooked everything, bought it all out in one go and just left it in a line. By the time you get to the third dish, it looks like, I'm not gonna swear, and you just need to go, well, this doesn't work. And then we've had to recook it all. They get annoyed, I get annoyed with that for ages. You need to be clear and concise. You need to explain to them how it works, that you'll arrive at nine o'clock, you'll have an hour for setup time. The first dish needs to be a test dish for lighting. Just bring me out a salad or some pasta, something easy. Then you bring the first dish out. Then you have to adjust it and style it. There's probably not gonna be a budget for a stylist at a local cafe. You get it sorted, you do the shot, you want to be shooting tethered if you can and go, do you like this shot? Are you happy? Yes or no? Yes, please press five stars on my keyboard. That'll flag it as the shot you want. And it just stops any of this issues further down the line, especially if it's not the owner who's there on shoot day. And he's like, we don't like these shots. You go, yeah, but your chef signed them off or your manager signed them off. You need to cover your back. So the take home messages here, number one, do not charge per shot or per hour. Number two, have a clear brief. 
as well as what the shots are. You want to get image references for each shot because you don't want to be shooting there and all of a sudden they want some elaborate flat lay that you weren't expecting. And you've got to build a rig. You've got to get on a ladder. All these things that you didn't expect because they don't know that it's not easy to do these things. They think you're clicking a button. You know, you need to impress them. You need to explain to them why it takes this time, why it's going to take so long. We had a shoot for a local restaurant years ago and we had to, and they had a bigger budget. It was a big restaurant. Um, and we had to build scaffolding to shoot because they wouldn't, sh they wanted the depth from the top of the table to the floor. They wanted to show it all. And to do that, we had to get up in the air. They didn't understand why. And I was like, well, well how do you expect me to take the shot? Like, well, you hold your camera over top. I'm five foot seven with short arms like this. It's not going to work. So you've got to be clear. You've got to be concise. Keep it all in emails and payment. You need to be clear on the payment terms. Is it payment on the day? Is it payment before the day? Do you need to be paid to turn up? Or is it payments upon delivery? And if it's upon delivery, who signs it off to say it has been delivered and accepted? All these things. Working at this level is not going to build a career. It is a learning curve. It is a starting block. You need to work your way through this. Learn the trade as you're going through the restaurant phase of the photography or the blogger stage. That's where you learn it to move to the next level where you can get better money, better clients, and fundamentally better images because of it. So I hope this has been of use. Do check out the other videos because we've gone through a lot of business stuff in here, especially relating to food and commercial photography because that's what I do. That's my thing. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.